Hi, this is Doug. This is our continuation of the video series on Big Commerce data, product data imports, um, our new process. We uh, this will deal with the revision five of the spreadsheet that we have been working on in all of the other videos. So um, in the last video, we had gotten to the process of modifying the descriptions, creating the product names, and had created the uh, run the HTML wrapper program, which gave us this code here. Now, um, from this point, the thing to do is to um, take some examples of this code and make sure that the formatting came out right. It may have to be run again because some columns had some fussed up data or something got done wrong. So how the heck do you manage to uh, take a look at this gibberish and see if it's uh, the right thing. And there's a trick to it. Always a trick to things. So the trick is to create a basic text file with an HTML extension and drag and drop it into the web browser and see how the formatting renders. Uh, it's not perfect, but you know, it gives you a good rough of what the heck's going on. So um, I'm going to open up Notepad here. And there are some tools online on the internet that you can do this as well, but I, I find this is easiest for me. So we're going to drag this in here to look at it. And uh, what we're seeing here is just uh, one of these descriptions that have been dropped into this uh, file. So um, uh, after a while, you learn the, the uh, keyboard shortcuts to uh, pick these. So I want to... Uh, copy one from here. We're going to copy the first one. Uh, there. See? All right. And then we're going to delete the other one that's in there. Do a V. Uh, do a uh, save, which is Control S. And then we take our web browser window and uh, drop the code in there. And here we see our rendering. Um, now, of course, the spec sheet links aren't going to work, but at least it shows us that everything is rendering pretty well. Um, and uh, we do this a few more times. Uh, you know, at least do at least uh, you know three or four in your series. Try and pick a, a variety of links uh, to make sure that the bullet points came out right. So, uh, once again, we uh, Control A to select blanket. Pick one of these, Control C, paste it in there, Control S to save it, and you don't have to drag and drop it. And once once you hit save, if you just hit the refresh, the next one will come up. And you see here that the the numbers change, the wattage and voltage has changed, that type of thing. Of course, as I said, these links will not work if you click on them. We just, as we said, just want to take a look at it to make sure it renders properly. Um, so you, you do this three or four more times and you've got a good idea that, uh, that all of these formatting uh, have come out correctly. So from here we get into our final stretch. Um, we're going to create a new tab here, call it um, BC Final from Big Commerce Final. And we're going to copy, uh, and as we said, we're doing a subset here. Normally this would be the merge one, but we're just doing uh, 100 for testing. So we're copying these and, oops, paste it in here. Now in BC Final, we can go ahead and take out the columns of information that are not going to be imported to BigCommerce. So Concat is no longer needed. We can delete that. Um, the PDF file names have already been encoded in the HTML on DeskBot on that tab. We don't need those anymore. Uh, none of the lumens and dimming information, that's all been encoded, so we don't need that anymore either. Uh, the rest of them are good. All right. Good. Um, now the next step here is to look at our template and start applying in the the uh, various things that we need. Now we're going to need a, let's see here, um, start going through these one of these time. Uh, each color represents whether this is a mandatory, whether it's a fixed data field or 
or not. The blue and the orange ones are the ones that are mandatory. Uh, product ID only shows up when you're doing a bulk edit and re-import. Um, so uh, I am not sure that uh, that Big Commerce import requires these columns to be in this exact order. Um, but uh, in our processing, we try and keep it this way so we're consistent. So we go back and forth to these columns and insert uh, in order the things that are missing. So, okay, so our first one is item type and we copy it there and we paste it into item type and we see from the template that it's a fixed value that is called product and we copy it in there, all well and good. Then we fill that all the way down and that's good and we keep going through the list. When we get to brand name, that is going to be uh, created manually because there's obviously not a column in the spreadsheet for that. Uh, this brand name is going to be the name that is used in Big Commerce to identify uh, these products to a particular brand. Uh, be very careful that you're consistent uh, so uh, that you're not accidentally making uh, RAB with uh, uppercase letters, RAB with lowercase letters, RAB as in RAB lighting, and then it looks like you've got three different brands which are really the same thing. So be consistent. Um, uh, and we, we are going to, uh, whoops, we are going to mistype and fuck up everything. Um, <laughs> this will be RAB in uppercase and consistent to our naming uh, already in our, in our site. We go ahead and fill that down and then keep going with the remaining columns. You should rearrange the columns as needed. So in this next series, first uh, product description, then prices next. So we grab it from here, drag it over here so it's in the right sequence and delete this no longer needed column. Weight, height, depth, width uh, come next. So we go ahead and make a space for those and drag them over and delete that. And you follow this all the way through in the sequence. Now, of course, there are some things on the template that will be ignored. If there's no image three, you don't put any of the image three attributes. If you're not having a fixed um, shipping charge then you leave that out so you have to be a little bit creative on what the what the set of things are depending on your site and for the most part um, we use most of these on ours anyway uh, when we get to the last two GT GTIN um, GTIN is usually an extension of the UPC if you don't have a GTIN field then you're going to copy UPC into GTIN uh, and change the name on the top. And so that's kind of close enough. GTIN is usually the UPC with two more digits to identify country of origin. So that's the big difference there. Manufacturer's part number will be the very last one. This is the same in our case as product code SKU, which we will copy and Put on the end here and then change the heading name as such. Copy from there and change that one. And all right, at the end of it all, you should have something look looks like this. There should be no columns of information uh, that Big Commerce doesn't use, and it should have a standard set of columns that it does use and need. Now keep in mind this is a importing. Uh, for records that don't already exist in the system. If you're doing an update, this is a slightly different process um, and uh, that will be covered in other videos. Now the two last critical pieces here that we still need to add are uh, we need a product name uh, which is currently blank and we have to change these product descriptions to the HTML version so let's go ahead and clear that product descriptions thing and then we'll use our AbleBits tool to update um, these uh, addition, uh, these last couple of fields. So of course we have to put the heading back in description. 
So we have our two blank columns that we need to fill. We use able bits in here. Probably best go ahead and save this at this point. Um, highlight that. Highlight. Now we created the product name and the descriptions in the desk mod column. So we're just going to grab those two columns and update them up here. So we go back to BC final after we've highlighted that. Use our able bits data. Merge two columns. Next, uh, we're pulling pulling the two columns of information from desk mod. Okay, next we are matching on product code SKU. And this time we're gonna do an update uh, because we've got the columns already here, just blank. So we're gonna update product name and that will match up with Oh, and of course, if you've hidden something on the spreadsheet, you got to unhide it or else AbleBits can't see it to search on and add. So that's a little uh, surprise. Hiding, unhiding can get you in trouble. Uh, all right, so now product name's unhidden. Now we go back to this again. Uh, merge duplicates. Next. Desk mod. Next. Product code SKU match. Columns to update in the main table. Product name shouldn't equal product name. Product description should equal, in this case, it is the mixed lum fix because we had to change the lumens value on this. So then we do next there. We're not adding any columns. We do finish and, oops. And of course we picked the wrong product description, so we'll have to do uh, the process again to pick the right damn description because it's been a late day and I'm tired. Okay, desk mod. Product code SKU. Okay, this time we're gonna update the description again and this time we'll pick the right description field, which was product description mixed lumfix HTML, the very last one we did. Uh, oops, tired eyes. Okay, next, no add, finish. All right, that's good. And we see the HTML code, so the descriptions have been matched. Good. At this point, we go ahead and save this version of the spreadsheet. Now this is going to represent the final sheet before the import, so best to give it a quick eyeball and make sure that you haven't goofed anywhere. Uh, take a look at these fixed fields like item type and such. We did a fill down, make sure they did actually fill down to all of the records in the sheet. It doesn't look like there's any blanks. I haven't fouled up anything and put the wrong thing in descriptions. The category is in place. Everything that's labeled. There is no garbage columns of information that we don't want to import. And it looks like we're good to do. Uh, we do one more final save. And then the final step before we actually import into BigCommerce is to take your BC final sheet, make sure that's the one that's highlighted, and do a file save as, and save it as a standard CSV file because BigCommerce does not import spreadsheets. So once you've once you've got that and you've got it in the right place, uh, temp for app data, and you tell it save. All right, you always get a warning that uh, doesn't support multiple workbooks, that's fine. Um, tell it okay. And now it's, this is in limbo land. Be very careful not to, to do any changes and modifications to this spreadsheet because you're seeing something weird in limbo. So we did a file save as CSV. This is the CSV file, but these columns of information, even though they're showing, don't exist. This is not the version 5 spreadsheet. So if you try and make any changes to this and do a save, you will foul things up. Do not just close this. If you have to do any changes, discard the CSV file, go back to Rev5 of the spreadsheet, and do it again. So we go ahead and close this because we're done with that. Now this is not absolutely mandatory, but um, I tend to be a stickler because I've been stuck so many times with this and I like to do a quick visual eyeball of the CSV file and just to see that uh, 
the formatting looks more or less right. So we're going to open up Notepad, drag and drop it into here. And what I'm looking for primarily is that the UPC codes look like they're embedded uh, in a format they are supposed to be. I know it's kind of hard to read this as a CSV, but scroll towards the end and we try and identify the the part in this uh, where the where the UPC code or EAN product EAN would be. And here we can find it without too much trouble. And we just want to make sure that we haven't had misformatting here and we've actually accidentally truncated off a zero or it reads in scientific notation would be like minus E plus XM something something that actually does look like the UPC code that we needed. And this looks good. Um, we don't have to be too thorough with this and this is just me being anal. It's not an absolutely necessary last step. Um, so at this point this completes the prepping the BigCommerce import spreadsheet and the final CSV file for the import process. Um, and so we don't have to do any more changes to the spreadsheet. This is Rev5 is the last uh, version of this. Um, at this point, before we go any further and do the final import process into BigCommerce, you should have um, imported the pictures and the PDF files into the web dev folders of your BigCommerce site uh, using the programs that have been supplied. Uh, please take a look at the video on the uh, BigCommerce web dev importing and, and uh, verification process, the, the uploads. Um, that has to be done before the CSV file is run uh, or else you'll have a failure and you'll have to do it again. So, but this completes this part of the video. The next, the next one to look at uh, before, before the uh, BigCommerce um, final import step is to look at the web dev file importing. And thank you and have a good day.